Okay, so you've all opened your Bibles to Luke chapter 4. If you have, give me a wave. Okay, I can see majority of you. Yeah, almost all of you. Can't see Toby, can't see Joseph. But yeah, yeah, good. So let us read Luke chapter 4. We're talking about the temptation of Jesus. And like you have just said now, we have all been tempted before. I saw everybody's hands going up. We've all been tempted before. So we want to learn how to, you know, how did Jesus get over this temptation? Because it's real. We will all be tempted. But how, let's learn from Jesus how we can, you know, be victorious. How we can um, overcome the temptation of the enemy, the temptation of the devil. So um, let, verse 1 says, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Now, this verse is talking about, who, who knows what this verse is talking about? Where did he live? What was he doing in the river Jordan? As in, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. What was he doing there? Who can remember? Ruth? Chidera? Chidera? Okay. Ruth. Who do I call now? Chibuka? Okay, go on. Tell me, what was he doing there? He was getting baptized by John the Baptist. Good, good, good. Thank you, Chidera and Ruth, because I know you know the answer as well. He was getting baptized, and and his, verse 1 is just reminding, reminding us that he was full of the Holy Spirit. How many of you know that you have the Holy Spirit already in you? Do you know that as a child of God, you are, you are full of the Holy Spirit? You have the Holy Spirit in you. So... That makes us, we don't have any excuse now. As we're reading this, I want to, it, it's for you to compare yourself and say, hmm, if Jesus could do this, that means I can do it. Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit and he was led into the wilderness where, verse 2, he, this, um, it says, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. Can you imagine that? For 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days and at the end of them, he was hungry. Okay, he was hungry. That means that he was vulnerable. He was in a state where, oh, he was very hungry. He needed food. So many excuses for him to allow the devil to tempt him. I mean, just picture yourself when you are in your, when you are very hungry. Maybe you just came back from school and you had spots, spots all day, or you had some event that made you so drained and you come back and you're like, oh God, I'm hungry or, or I'm thirsty. I need water. And you sometimes you could just do anything to get what you you are you are that thirsty that you might feel like oh I can do anything to get water so picture yourself like that Jesus was very hungry, and as in he was very hungry because he spent how many days forty days in the wilderness and that is when the devil came to tempt him so that what is that telling us that we should all be prepared all be prepared for um whatever the, you know whatever time or day. We should all be prepared because we have the Holy Spirit in us. Don't let your guard down. Because now the, the devil came to, verse 2 tells us that the devil has been, came to him when he was hungry. And that's when he asked him all this question that we're going to read in verse 3. So verse 3, bless him, read verse 3. The devil said to him, if you are the son of God, how this stone to become bread. Hmm. Did you see that? So the devil comes to comes to meet Jesus and says, "Okay, you have to prove to me that you are the Son of God. If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread." I mean, you, if you put yourself in Jesus' shoes, you, you might want to prove. But what is Jesus trying to teach us here? That you don't need to prove yourself to anybody. You have to know who you are. Jesus knew who he who he he was or who he, he is. That's why he gave the answer in verse 4. Who is going to read verse 4? Ruth, verse 4. Um, and Jesus answered him saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. See, if he, if he didn't, if he was just a people pleaser, people pleaser, he would have been like, Oh, I need to prove, I need to prove to, to the devil that I'm the son of God. I need to prove who I am. I need to prove that I'm a child of God. I need to prove that I'm bold, I'm strong. You need to know it for yourself. You need to know who you are. Know, know who you are because it's about knowing. It's not about 
proving because when you know it just you just generally behave like that when you when you know that you are bold and confident you know that god has given you boldness and confidence you will speak when you're speaking you will speak in a bold and confident way you won't have to you won't have to pretend and say oh people are watching me now so let me behave bold bold and confident you won't be doing so the devil was looking for jesus to do something to prove his identity as the son of god but jesus said see I'm not proving anything to you. You know, I, I know that I'm the son of God. And he says, see, man shall not live by bread alone. Fine, I'm hungry and I need bread. But I will live by every word of God that comes um, out of the, um, the mouth of God. He's trying to say that the, what is most important is the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone. He didn't say, man, you know, he knows that bread is important. Food is important to us because we're human beings and we need food to grow. But he's saying there's one thing that is important, that is the word of God. So I liked how, if you look at it here, how, how Jesus put the devil in his place and says, see, you know, I don't have to prove myself to you. I know who I am. I know what values, it, it, it now depends, what, what values do you stand by? You know, when you know that you're a child of God, you will show love, you show joy, you show, you, 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 you are, you're full of peace. You're full of the fruit of the spirit. So it just flows through you. You don't have to pretend or, you know, pretend that you're something that you're not or, or show that you're something, you know, you just have to be because the Holy Spirit is in you. So the Holy Spirit is in each and every one of us. You know, Jesus could have said, oh, I need to prove to this devil that I'm the, I'm the son of God. So let me, let me change. I know I can, I can change this stone to bread. Let me show him. But I mean, it's not, he doesn't have to show the devil that he's the son of God when he knows that he's the son of God. Okay. You know, you're a child of God. Act like a child of God. Behave like a child of God. Live like a child of God. You don't have to prove to anybody you're a child of God. You just, it just flows through you. People will see you and know that there is something different about you. Why? Because of the value system you have, because you've, of the things that you value, you know, so let's see, let's um th this is something to learn about um the first temptation now who can read the second temptation verse 5 peace and the devil taking him up into a high mountain show, showed him should unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time okay go on go on Shall I read verse 6? Yes, go, read verse 6 and, and 7. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I, will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt wa worship me, then... If thou therefore worship me, mm. all shall be thine. Okay, did you see that? Let me read it again. Thank you, peace. It says, the devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor. It has been given to me. Now, this is the devil speaking. You know. The devil is telling Jesus that he's going to give him all these things and I can give it to anyone I want. Then verse seven, the devil says, if you worship me, it will all be yours. Now, this is a devil being the trickster he is telling Jesus that, see, all this kingdom I am going to give to you. Now, who can um, read verse eight? What, um, what Jesus answered him? I love that, Sarah. Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is right written that those shall worship the Lord thy God and him only shall. The, the, 
Right. Right. Well, thank you very much, Sarah. Jesus answered him and said, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. What was the first thing you saw in um, when Jesus answered him? Who can tell me what was the first thing Jesus said? Who knows what was the first thing Jesus said for the second one? What's the first thing when Jesus answered him about worshiping? Ruth, what's the first thing he said? Um, get behind me. Okay, go on. There's something I'm looking for. In the answer, in his answer, what did he say? It is written. I want all of you to see that. It is written. It is written. What is he trying to tell us there? That you have to know the word of God for yourself. If Jesus does not, you know, if he didn't know this thing, Jesus' is knowledge only on its own, but we have to know the word of God for ourselves so that when the devil comes sneakily and say, oh, let's do this, or oh, why don't you do this? You know, it is written in the Ten Commandments. Exodus chapter 20 says, do not lie. So I am not going to lie or do not steal. So I am not going to steal it. Do you understand? Because you know, we are learning this thing and you can see, you saw it in the Bible for yourself. It is written. So if somebody says that, comes to you and says, mm, you know, it didn't just say, it says only steal. You Maybe you can only lie to, don't lie to your parents, but you can lie to this. You know, you know th that's how it should be. You go. You said, I've read the Bible. The Bible says, do not lie. It didn't say, do not lie to parents, but lie to this person. Do you understand? So the devil can come trickily and tell you, yes, I know the Bible says, do not lie, but he'll put a but there and make it look very enticing for you so that you can think and say, hmm, it might be true, you know. But when you know the word for yourself, you will know what is a tr what is truth. And what is a lie? That is what I'm pointing out for you. You will know what is truth and what is a lie. So what, what is this second temptation teaching us here? Who can point out what we just got out of this second temptation? What has it taught us? What is it teaching us here? Anybody? I can see blessing and root. I want somebody else. Come on, come on, guys. Think what what we just understood by. The second temptation, the devil took him to a high place, showed him everywhere and said, worship me and I'll give you all these things. But Jesus said, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him alone. What can you learn? What can you tell me you've learned from this second? Is that Emmanuel? Emmanuel, do you want to say, yeah, Emmanuel, go on. Oh, the Emmanuel was just putting his hand on the screen. Come on, I I want somebody else. I don't want blessing. I don't want Ruth. Treasure, do you have? Do you, do you can you tell me what do you think when you read the second second one that says that says, you know, the devil was tempt, tempting him, and he said it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve only Him. Before I explain it, I want Isabel. Yes, I can see your hand. Go on, Isabel. We should not be carried away from the things of the world. Okay, we should not be carried away with the things of the world. Okay, that is it. That is one. What other lesson can you learn from it? Emmanuel, are you raising your hand or are you, if you're raising your hand, talk because I don't know if you're putting your hand on the screen or raising your hand. Okay. Okay, let's talk about it. It is written. So what we have learned from it is we need the word of God to know. We need to read the Bible for ourselves to know what is written. You have to read the Bible for yourself to know what is written because that is the only way you can say, say mm -mm. that thing you just told me now is not true because my, my Bible tells me differently or mm -mm -mm. the Holy Spirit does not. No, no, that is not true. You know, because the devil will not come and tell you a, a blatant lie that, hmm, come and steal this thing. He will make it look like, see, you know you're hungry. You know you're very hungry. Why don't you just go and take the meat or and then pretend like you didn't take it and you, you'll feel justified. Yes, you know I'm very hungry. But when you know the Bible says, do not lie, do not steal, it is clear. You won't, you won't allow the devil, you'll say, get thee behind me, Satan. Just as Jesus said, get, you know, get away from me. You know, it is written. This is what the Bible says. So 
always know what the Bible says. It is so important for every one of us to know the Bible for ourselves. That is what I can see from this second um, temptation. Now, did the devil end there? Did it? No. No. Treasure, can you tell me verse 9? Can you read verse 9, sorry? Okay. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle on the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. Mm, and what did he answer, Giovanni? Read verse 10. Um, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. Okay, he still continued verse 11. Who's going to read verse 11? Peculiar, verse 11. Peculiar, yeah, verse 11. <laughs> Okay, who else apart from Peculiar, verse 11, um, Chebuka, go on. And in their hands they shall bear you up, let your dash your foot against a stone. Okay, so this is what the devil is telling him, that see, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here. Because it's already written. Now, the, you see the, how the devil is coming. He, he now, the devil is now quoting that. See, you know it is written. He will command his angels. That God will command his angels to guide you carefully. When, and he will lift up his, your hand so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. He's trying to tell, tell Jesus here that. See, I know the word of God. It is written that God will protect you. So why don't you just throw yourself from the top of the, the highest temple? Throw yourself down because it is written that God will protect you. And, you know, can you see what he has done now? He has taken the truth from the Bible, but he's twisted it. So that is why we. it is still telling us here how we need to know the Bible for ourselves. Because the just as I gave the example, the the devil can come and say see you know it is i know it is written don't lie you know but you're, you 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 really need to it doesn't matter just just tell a lie for now or i know it is written don't steal but you know you're very hungry why don't you just take it um because you're hungry i mean who will not take it they're hungry this is a this is a, this is a thought that comes to your mind you know that is where the devil tries to to talk to us in our thoughts and you feel justified but god is telling us here through, through the word of God, we can see that, see, even when the devil comes and twists the story like he has just done here to make us feel like, see, you know, it's still the word of God. Check to be sure that it is, you're doing the right thing. Check your, check the reason why you're doing it. And that is what verse 12, what did Jesus answer him in verse 12? Toba. And Jesus and said to him, it has been said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. And verse 13, the end. Who hasn't read? I'm looking to see. Uh, uh, Chidera, have you read? Okay, go on, finish verse. Oh, Israel, sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll pay attention to you later. Chidera, finish up. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. Okay. All right. Okay. It says, Jesus said to him, do not put the Lord your God to test. And the devil left him when he realized that he could not tempt him again. So what can you learn from, what can you learn from this third temptation that we just read now? Who can tell me? What can you learn from this third temptation? What can you learn from the third temptation? If you know, if you have, if you just have an idea or you want to say something about, about what just happened now, Jesus took him from, to if, um, the devil took him to a, you know, the top of the pinnacle and said, just, just throw yourself and fall. You know that it is written that God will always protect you because God will always protect you. 
throw yourself, you know, just behave anyhow because you know that God is guiding you. But God said, Jesus said to him, do not put your, the, the Lord to test. Bless him. Bless him. I saw your hand up. Do you want to explain verse 3 and um, the, the third temptation? Sarah? Ruth, go on. Um, what I understood from there is that basically, um, when it said in verse, verse 12, when it says, um, it said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So basically, what I learned that you should not test God, even though it says that um, when, when the devil said that Jesus should, should just throw himself off the high building because he said god will always protect him but well, that's basically just testing god and it says here that we should not test god so yes good ruth thank we you test. we should not test god i mean because you know that god is going to save you doesn't mean that you will run you see a car coming and then you run in front of the car and say god should save me do you understand and that's what the devil is trying to make him there to prove prove god to prove that he's God, you, you know, and God, you have to know God for yourself. You have to know that God is God and God is saying, do not tempt me. You know that I'm God. You don't do things just to find out how will life, how will God, I know God is going to save me. So because I know God is going to save me when the car is coming, I will just jump in front in the, on the, in the middle of the road. No, no, do not tempt God. Do not tempt the Lord thy God. It is already, it is written that we should not tempt God. So it's, it's so there are so many things we can learn from this temptation that, that the, the word of God is key. It's important in our lives. We need to trust God and follow him. You know, you can see that God, God protected him. He was hungry. He could have just said, oh, let me just turn this stone to bread to prove it's a point. But he did not. So who can tell me the first one? Let's do a bit of re recap. 